Now, on the other hand, what about a disobedient worldly brother who continually, continually disobeys, continually compromises? What are we to do to him? Matthew chapter 18 is the first passage. We're going to look at these briefly so we can move on. But Matthew chapter 18 tells us how we regard a brother who is disorderly or who is continuing to be disobedient. Matthew 18, 15 says, "'If thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother.'" Now, you've got a sinning brother. The first thing to do is privately to go to him and tell him of his fault. If he listens to you and changes his behavior, you've gained a brother. Verse 16, "'If he won't hear you, take one or two more, so that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established.'" Take two or three witnesses, again confront him with his sin. If he doesn't hear, doesn't alter it. The third procedure, verse 17, if he neglects to hear, tell it to the church, the highest court, the local assembly. And if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man. You see what happens to somebody who fails to submit to the authority of the church? They actually render themselves as a pagan outside the authority of the church. So there it tells you what to do with such a person. You are to go to him, then you are to go to him with two or three witnesses, then you are to bring it to the church. If he doesn't hear, you are to treat him as an outsider. To carry this a little bit further, turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 6. It says this, "'Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourselves from every brother that continues to walk disorderly and not after the tradition which he received of us. If somebody will not repent, he has been brought to the church, he does not accept the discipline of the church, you put him out, he is rendered as a pagan, you are to separate or withdraw yourselves from that brother that walketh disorderly. For you yourselves know how you ought to follow us. For well, we behave not ourselves disorderly. In other words, you are to follow our example. Verse 11, we hear there are some who walk among you disorderly. You say, oh boy, I wonder what kind of gross sins they're doing. They had to be put out. They don't work, they are busybodies. You say, is that gross? Gross enough to put them out of the church. Somebody who is a lazy busybody. Wow. Now them that are such, we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work and eat their own bread, earn their own living, stay home and eat their own meals. You, brethren, be not weary in well-doing, and if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man, have no company with him that he may be ashamed, yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him or warn him gently as a brother." Somebody who continues to walk disorderly, you are to go to that individual. If he doesn't hear you, you and two others or one other are to go to him. If he still doesn't hear, you are to bring that to the attention of the leaders of the church. If the church cannot get out of him a change in behavior, the church is to dismiss him and treat him as a pagan who is outside the authority of the church. When that occurs, you are to sever your relationship with that man and that he may be ashamed of his behavior. You say, but what's going to happen to him? Don't worry about that. If he's God's child, God will take care of him. He may, according to 1 Corinthians 5, come to the destruction of the flesh, but his soul will be saved because he belongs to God. Now, when you have no company with him, you count him not as an enemy yet, but you admonish him as what? Your warnings are always loving and gentle. 